adequate access for emergency personnel and vehicles and municipal water fire protection to the site will be available throughout the subdivision, construction activities, and post construction activities. The Orchard Subdivision meets the requirements of Section 395.63.01 of the Land Division Ordinance, wherein there's fewer that, that requires that no more than 20 lots be planted within any one subdivision with one means of access. And if I could just show you this uh, slide that, that gives you a better understanding of how this particular subdivision is connected to the Prairie Trails East Subdivision to the South for access. Again, the Orchard is located north of 121st Street and just to the east of the Kenosha County Bike Trail. Coming out of that subdivision, 120th, the, the uh, individuals could go north towards 116th Street or south 28th Avenue towards 128th Street through Prairie Trails East, or you could loop around and then go north again on 26th Avenue to 116th Street. Specifically on that site, again, the variance would be for the cul de sac length, which would be at 1,374 feet or exceed the maximum by 574. This is a matter for public hearing. If the board or the audience has any questions. Okay, once again, a matter for public hearing. Michael Wilk. Side of my house, 
how beautiful it is without any construction. Just loved it. Um, <coughs> my only uh, suggestion is, um, since we are going to be hit with all this development, instead of putting a cul-de-sac at the end of that arrow, take out that one uh, lot and let it connect with Prairie Trails East. Even if it's temporary, while they're building theirs, uh, that road's got to be put in anyways, because uh, if you look at the Prairie Trails East subdivision, there's going to be a road there anyways. If you could do something to alleviate the mess that we've been subject to the last nine months, um, I, I've got a list here, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, uh, even at start times, uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, my two-year-old uh, granddaughter moved back in with me. Back in July, 5.34 in the morning, a semi got stuck in my culvert trying to back into this, um, uh, into this uh, property with the uh, floor joists. She woke up just screaming. I thought, I thought a damn airplane landed on the road. Um, I, I know you guys got set time, 7 o'clock to this time or that time. Nobody hears to that. Nobody. We've had construction traffic as early as 5.30 and as late as 10 o'clock at night. Saturdays and Sundays, this has been going on, nine months. And uh, I thought, hey, I'll let Saturdays and Sundays go so they get done with this project. But that wasn't the case. They were working on the house. Um, some of the workers were taking the bobcat and trailer off the job site, going somewhere else, leaving mud all over the road, and then bringing it back. Also, they were using the dumpster there for their own private dumping. <coughs> tires and brush and everything else. So I asked the owner, I said, who's paying for that dumpster? He goes, I am. I said, you guys, you got, it looks like it got to be 300 bucks a piece. I go, you got guys dumping your Saturdays and Sundays free of charge. Uh, the concrete trucks were washing out into the culvert. That culvert takes all the water from north of us. And then it takes it down to the end of the cul-de-sac and then it runs to 26th Avenue. Concrete trucks are washing out in there. Right now it's covered in snow. Some of those pictures will show you how much lumber, this queen, Cardboard, nobody's cleaning it up. It's, it's come this spring, we're going to have a severe problem there. And then uh, if you add this subdivision, if their retention ponds get overflown, and at first the engineer said, oh no, everything's going north. The first two meetings, yeah, no, everything goes north. And I knew from just looking at it that it's going to come south. Now they've changed and oh yeah, our overflow will come south. So at the at cul de sac on the, on the east side of 28th Avenue down there should be addressed. Somebody should come up there and clean that up once the snow leaves. With the amount of snow and rain that might be coming, it's, it's going to be a problem. Um, anyways, that's, that's my suggestion. If they got to bring all that construction traffic up, and since they're working at Pleasant, uh, Prairie Trails East, jog that road over, take out that one um, lot there, even if it's temporary, while they're building it, to alleviate any more um, uh, mud, concrete, whatever that's on our road. Please, think about it. I'll pick up the pictures later. Thanks. Thank you, Dad, Paul. I agree with you. Hi, it's Cindy Dabble, 12011 20th Avenue. I come here tonight again to ask you to reconsider the subject. I didn't even think about putting the road to there, but when the economic the is more of a the research. For the article in the paper a couple weeks ago about how well the planning commission was doing, how well they planned and everything, that's the fine job, and it turned around and stacked in the face, saying they need another variance. Um, isn't this a third variance for the subdivision? Is there a certain amount limited for variances? The variances cost anything, or is it just, you know, apply for one and see what happens? Is it just, we decide it right now if they get it or not? Seems like the village just doesn't care about us existing residents. It really doesn't. I know you need the eight hundred some dollars you need to reach house because this economy is really getting ridiculous. I know the subdivision isn't going to happen for at least two years. It gives us time to figure out where to I don't know how many subdivisions do we need. I don't know. The village 